Hi, my name is Tim Wang, and I'm the Director of Policy and Advocacy at Howard Brown Health. Today, I want to talk about a critical federal program called the 340B Drug Discount Program. The 340B program was created in the 1992 Public Health Service Act with the goal of allowing covered entities, including federally qualified health centers like Howard Brown, to stretch scarce federal resources as far as possible, reaching more eligible patients and providing more comprehensive services. The 340B program creates critical revenue and funding for safety net providers across the country without costing any taxpayer dollars. The way the program operates is that it requires pharmaceutical companies um, that want to participate in Medicaid to provide significant discounts on drugs to safety net providers. We then pass along these discounted drugs directly to our uninsured patients. When we fill scripts for insured patients, we generate 340B savings because many insurers reimburse closer to the market value um, while we paid a discounted 340B price. So the difference between those two is how safety net providers can generate revenue from the 340B program. And this is how the program was designed to work, so it's not like a loophole. We pride ourselves on being good stewards of the 340B program. We reinvest every penny of our 340B savings into improving access to care and expanding services for our patients. At Howard Brown, our 340B savings are especially critical for supporting innovative and holistic programs that are generally underfunded or poorly reimbursed. 340B savings have helped us to develop and expand our youth development, dental, client assistance, gender affirming care, HIV case management, and behavioral health services, just to name a few. All of these services are critical for the health and well-being of our patients. Historically, Howard Brown has been very successful in generating 340B savings, and this has helped us to financially support the wide range of services that we offer. Recently, pharmaceutical companies have become much more aggressive in attacks on the 340B program, taking back crucial savings that should be going to safety net providers and our patients. Since 2020, 18 pharmaceutical manufacturers, including Eli Lilly, Merck, and Gilead, have restricted or eliminated access to 340B priced drugs through contract pharmacies, with eight manufacturers specifically targeting contract pharmacies that work with federally qualified health centers. At Howard Brown, we rely on a large network of contract pharmacies all across the city to expand access to low-cost medications no matter where our patients live. These manufacturer restrictions harm patient access to medication, and they also hinder our ability to generate 340B savings. For decades now, the 340B program has worked as a sort of patchwork solution to the chronic underfunding of the nation's public health safety net, including the HIV safety net. Virtually every federally qualified health center, Ryan White HIV medical provider, and STI clinic in the country relies on 340B program savings in order to fund critical services like patient navigation, health counseling, transportation, behavioral health care, labs, STI testing, and community outreach. Unfortunately, there have been a number of recent changes uh, within the last year or two that have significantly decreased 340B revenue for HIV providers. First, the brand name drug Truvada for PrEP went generic. Overall, going generic helps to lower cost barriers to accessing PrEP, which is critical for expanding access to care and advancing our goal to end the HIV epidemic. However, because of the way the 340B program operates, the lower market rate for generics actually results in significant reductions in 340B savings on PrEP. Additionally, Gilead, the makers of Truvada, also recently made significant changes to their Advancing Access program, which provides free PrEP to uninsured patients. The program previously reimbursed clinics in a model similar to the 340B program, but Gilead ended their practice uh, despite concerns raised by HIV advocates, resulting in a loss of at least $100 million annually for 340B HIV clinics across the country, according to NBC News. Altogether, these recent changes have resulted in a very unstable and shifting 340B landscape for HIV providers, and there has not been reliable alternative federal funding streams to make up for that lost 340B revenue. We have joined with coalitions of other safety net providers across the country in uplifting our concerns with the attacks on the 340B program. These include the National Association of Community Health Centers, the LGBTQ Plus Primary Care Alliance, and AIDS United. Our goal is to raise awareness among elected officials and government leaders about the importance of the 340B program for safety net providers across the country and to work together to advance solutions to strengthen the program and bolster it from further attacks. In 2023, we are hopeful to see legislation advance at the national level that prevents these attacks from pharmaceutical companies on the 340B program. 
At the same time, we know that with the many changes in the PrEP market, the 340B program alone may not be sufficient to fund the work of the HIV safety net. We join other HIV policy advocates in urging for increased federal funding to address lost 340B revenue, especially funding to cover the administration of PrEP and PrEP-related medical services. In order to stay up to date on 340B and HIV funding issues, you can make sure to stay tuned to our advocacy blog and emails at Howard Brown. Uh, additionally, you can check out resources like NAC, the National Association of Community Health Centers, AIDS United, and CB340B as well.